Welcome to Sending Vessel Seeker. Seeker's draft is about seven and a half feet, but it really needs to be about seven. And we can do that if we take some weight off of her ass. She's got a big butt. Now, a lot of that problem was fixed by the addition of the Whaley instead of the very massive Love Me Tender that we built for this thing. The Whaley with the engine weighs about 800 pounds. The, uh, the tender that we had on there was well over 1,300 pounds. You can see here about uh, midship what we thought the original lines would be. You see the anti fouling is painted up to there and there. The growth starts and that just becomes greater in depth as we get to the back. And since a haul out is in the future here, I you know kind of like to know what her lines are really going to be when I finish messing with her so we can paint the uh, anti fouling where it needs to be and know what her actual draft will be. And this is our cargo hole. There's the main mass coming down. A lot of what I've done to help it out, and it didn't help that much, was I put as much weight as I could up here in the front. There's a whole stack of lead bars down there. There's another stack of lead bars back over there. There's some lead bars down in a fuel tank here. Uh, my cylinders are here. Those things are heavy. But the funny thing is, putting weight up in the front didn't do much for bringing the ass end up out of the water. It didn't do much for pushing the uh, bow down in the water. There's a lot of displacement in the front half of this boat. But back here in the engine room, we have this beast. It is about uh, 700 pounds of mill and lathe. So that can go forward. And if that doesn't do it, we might think about moving our VMAX generator and our 10K generator if it ever comes home up there. That comes later. First things first, the mill lathe is a fairly easy thing to move. So that's looking into the forward cabin. This is the companion way that goes down into the forward cabin. That mill and lathe will go nicely right in there. And then I got electrical service back in there for welders. So I can stack my welders there and I can put a welding work table back over in there. And then find a spot for our scuba tank compressor and our hookah and house air compressor that's up here too. Now I want to make these changes without messing up access to my tanks that are underneath the uh, wood floors here. So first thing to do is move some stuff out of the way and see what's down there. Oh look, scales. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Skipper could lose some weight too. 218. It's not the ultimate high, but that certainly is like uh, 18 more pounds than I need. And one of my favorite quotes, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Victor Frankl fantastic guy the book he wrote was man's search for meaning and it's all about uh him being a psychologist in a uh, prisoner of war camp auschwitz not really a prisoner of war camp more like an extermination camp he survived with his manuscript and that machine's big and it sticks way out into the floor here too put this in bobcat and see if we can fit it in there all right so there's our machine and there's the uh, angle of the wall behind it that's really a long way out from the wall because that thing is at a 60 degree uh, slant there. It puts it at 72 and a quarter inches from the bottom of the wall. Yeah, that is a big chunk of space. That means I got to stand back here where this compressor is. You know, I could put it up against this other wall here, but then it would come way out this way and I couldn't get back to my welders. Here's another idea. Put the CNC table there. Comes about here. You know what? Put it over here too. I got to put it a lot lower. Let's see what that looks like. It has two frames here. I can weld with them. That'd be easy. Put a deck going across. Still got space to go around to the welders. Got a path through here still. And the one against the hull, I'll just be able to put braces there diagonally out from that uh, support that's already in there on both sides of it. And that'll be an easy one to build. It's more out of the way. Doesn't take up any floor space. Yeah, we're going to do that one. So now that I know where I want them to go, it's time to make some cardboard templates and we'll use those to cut the steel. Well, it's nice to have friends with big trucks that can pick up steel for you. Well, thank you, Randy. Nicely done, sir. Andy and I have been shooting drone video for the uh, Grand Lagoon Yacht Club race out here today. I bet they wish they had a little more wind.
I don't know how many times they raced, but that was like number three or four. We're out of battery, so time for us to go cut some steel. That's my new hypertherm there, a 45. Smaller than the old unit, but smaller than the older unit too. I like that. On. How you doing today? You guys going to have enough wind? Oh, we have one or two today. That's all. What time do you think? Are you going? You're getting ready now? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you coming by. So I got a chance to fly my drone again and managed not to crash it into the water. But I got to thinking as I watched these boats, what would it be like to see them going really fast? Nope. That's still not getting old. Well, I got a lot of the grinding done today. I'm gonna have to hurry tomorrow though because it's gonna start raining. Good at night. Hope it looks good, good in the morning. What? <laughs> now they are lightning holes. This one is remarkably lighter. Trying to cut off this little air compressor today, so I got to have another job because that little one just doesn't keep up. The BMAC would, but I don't have it plumbed in, so. You accommodate by getting yourself two jobs. All right, enough of this. We're gonna make a good change. I think this is day three of grinding and tomorrow's gonna be grinding day two. But I am collecting some nice ground pieces down here, and so we will weld them in place and then apply some industrial coatings. So what I'm gonna to do to make tomorrow a better day is I'm gonna remove this damn thing. What it is, you can't pull the trigger until you push that in, then you can pull the trigger. But I wish it was, I wish it was a deal where you could, you know, pull the trigger, push it in, and then it would remain running. But no, we're all idiots now. We've been lowered to the lowest common denominator of the dumbest person in the room that doesn't know how to properly use the tool. So they put bullshit things like that on there. Besides that, anytime somebody has a little broken fingernail, they go off and sue the company, which is bullshit too. It's like you broke your fingernail because you did something stupid. That's called consequences. It's not somebody else's fault. It's your fault. Man up to it. God, I'm tired of all the insurance bullshit, friendless lawsuits by morons. And then this is the result, crap tools. This is why other places in the world are gonna kick our ass because they don't have this bullshit to go through. You might say I'm a little passionate about this. Yeah, there it is. All the screws are the same size except for the head. Those screws up there, those four, they're longer. Now it should all come apart. Cut the label. Happily void your warranty. Nice. There we go. All right, I'll figure out where that goes. That's just a switch. All right, no problem there. This is the problem. Okay, that 
holds that in. This rocks on from the back, I've discovered. And it's looking pretty good. Put one in down here to hold it together. The groove for the wire. Housing slides over that. Uh, yeah, good. Now the screws go in. Okay. Feels right. It's not all the screws, but it's enough for a test. <laughs> yeah. I only got two parts that I didn't use. A little spring and a little clip. And if it works without these, then uh, those are called flingers. Those little parts are probably a detent for this to make that a little snappier. Yeah, we can live without that if that's what it was. And didn't miss the moonrise or the sunset. That is beautiful. That's the eastern sky. Western sky has a thunderstorm headed our way. Which ain't a bad thing, it'll wash off my decks because I got grit everywhere. Yes, I am done grinding. And the rain never showed up. Okay, I've removed the wood and the foam from the back of the companionway and ground through the coal tar epoxy. Oh, isn't that fun? Uh, to expose some bare steel at the bottom. Hold it up a little more. A piece of angle iron is supporting the brace and it's all just balanced there right now, so time to get a tack in. Would help if the boat wasn't rolling around so much, but we can live with that. Right. The fire out. Yay. Heads up. There's smoke downstairs. Yep. The there is. Sound. It's going to be loud. I highly recommend this Nest smoke detector system. It does the smoke and carbon monoxide. It alarms through the whole boat. If you have an internet connection, it'll even send a message to your phone. I'll put a link in the description for you. There's smoke downstairs. All right. You need to disable that. Emergency. There's smoke. Smoke alarm silenced downstairs. There you go. Shove a wet rag back in there and see if we can't keep the fires down. I'm still learning sticks. What I'm doing is I'm putting a real small weld in down the side of the plate. It's in the bottom, then I'll come back and do another pass beside it. It needs to be strong at the top because that's where it takes most of the load. Right there is where it wants to get pried off. That is going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a death trap right there. Ooh, perfect. Okay. Tack. Excellent. Well, I'm going to show you the pretty part of the wheel. There it is right there. That's, just, that's good for me and stick. I'm better at MIG, but that's just because I have more time at MIG, not stick. The advantages to stick is if I'm only going to do a little bit, it's easy to get it and set it up. The other thing is that is the welder. It's a Miller uh, Maxstar 150S. You can get cheap versions of this at uh, Harbor Freight. That's just an inverter and it runs off 110 volts and, you know, a ground cable and the welding lead to the stinger and that's all you need. Now that Miller's a little pricey, but the one at Harbor Freight you know, it's, you get what you pay for, but you can get started for a lot less. And the alternative is my uh, big Miller with a, uh, my suitcase welder on it. But i got to turn the generator on for that because that thing pulls a lot more power. There's no way to pull it off my inverters. I need about uh, at least 40 amps for that thing. No less at all. So for small jobs like this or jobs where you don't want the heat in the engine room, oh, I love the stick. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh. I have to trim this one down because the boat comes in, therefore this frame is higher up. Well, the sun's out, that's good. Battery's down to 19, but that's a lot better than where we started yesterday, so. Let's start some solar powered welding and plasma cutting. Did some video editing last night and watched a movie a million miles away. It's really good, it's about persistence.
And I'll tell you what, if you don't have persistence, you're not going to get anything. I wish I had brains and good looks, but I got persistence. Boy, it does pay off. Slowly, but it pays off. Round off the corner so I don't die there. Here we are. That's a good weld that just has voids along the side, so I'm going to do the auto man's trick. Good old Bondo. Well, I haven't used Bondo since I was a kid working in my Volkswagen. It, it will save me a lot of time here. <laughs> I do recognize the smell. You know, I could put a cap weld on that and grind it down. That's what I normally do, but I gotta clean up all those grinding shavings in here. And this should do just fine. Oh yeah, that's a lot faster than welding it. Oh, instantly hidden. Yeah, that came out nice. A lot faster to sand off some Bondo than to grind off some weld. Okay, we gotta trim it down so it fits the wall because it's touching here. And that'll let it go in two inches. We got six inches to the frame there. And the bit that pokes out is almost four inches. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. And the machine comes out 38 inches from the wall. So yeah, we got a little bit more than two inches to burn. Well, the steel I picked up from Andy is actually five foot wide, not four, and I plan for four, but five is going to work out better because the whole machine will fit across that. It means I could come straight up with curtains and catch chips without having to bring the curtains in any. And I switched my rod over to a 7018. I'm getting a nicer weld out of that. It flows much better, has a nice rich woody scent to it. I like it. Gotta get a little bit of that flux off of there. That helps it start a lot better. It took us way too long to come up with this idea. You turn the vacuum on from the end of the vacuum. I just love this thing. And of course, back off again. Lovely, no walking across the room. Or cargo hole as it may be. And it's not round, it's flat on the side. So it mounts to a wall, great. It has a carriage, you can take it off the wall if you need to. Empty the filter easily, love it. It's got a long hose so it reaches into the cargo hole, into the engine room, even up through the hatch and does the pilot house. Here's a trick for you, good welders don't need this. But if you're gonna weld up along an edge, Put a piece of brass or copper behind it as a backing bar and that'll soak up a lot of the heat and let you build up this edge without actually just burning it away. And when you got enough, you can grind it down. I got a little dip over here in this corner. 3 sixteenths of an inch at least. So I'm gonna put one more brace underneath that. Yeah, maybe a piece of quarter inch. Flat bar will do it. Okay, so that just gives me something level. 
put this on by. Good. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Just need a weld right there. I want to paint it first. Then we'll put a few welds to hold it together. I think it's time for a new grinding disc. I'm still using these 3M discs. 3M Cubitron and I have not found anything better if you guys think you got one that's better and you've actually tried this one let me know but you got to have tried this one first because these things they just hold up and they don't gum up and they last a long time and maybe that offsets their high price <laughs> A 90 degree corners on steel doesn't hold paint well at all. It nearly just falls off, but it chips off real easy. So round them over when you can. Nothing clings like xylene. Ah, uh, ought to sell that to them, huh? What a pitch. Look at that. Gets all the oils off too. That's Pete and Debbie. Well, I'm back from the hardware store with some paint supplies and I'm going to paint the thing before I put it all together because it lets me get into places a lot easier and there'll be damage to it. I got to come back and touch up stuff anyway. So we'll weld it together after we put a coat of paint on. But it lets me get the back edge of the tops and things like that that'll be buried. And then I left some spaces that I can weld in. And you can always grind the stuff off. And I'm using Amberlock 2, a two-part epoxy paint. One to one mixture which makes it easy. And it's done well in the rest of the boat. Now I can start thinking about taking this apart. Because I sure can't carry it out of here in one piece. He can't even get it out of here in one piece. Okay, tables are kind of sitting where they go. They get welded in next, then uh, this gets reassembled on top of them. I watched a video once of a man moving a barn across his field using uh, nothing but stones from that time on I figured anything I want to I can move by myself with a little creativity it was all about letting the weight of the object do most of the work so I'm just teetering it back and forth here letting it go up because there's no way in hell I could lift this thing without a trick. There we go. Over the steel. There you go. Yeah. Right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Everything gets a good cleaning. Now before I bolt it down, I want to move it to its limits just to see where exactly it should be on the table. Right there. Well, there are a lot more things I need to do to get this thing finished, but uh, 
we're done for now. It's good to go because we need to go. When we get back to this, we'll finish the paint, find a good place to mount the computer, and probably some racks for the tools back in here too because I got plenty of room and it's very accessible. So I like it. And is she lighter in the ass? Yes, she is. She came up about two inches in the back. That's progress. And the extra room this gives me by putting out of here is nice too because you can run steel off that direction and a lot more this direction so it's much roomier. And that'll help for things like just drilling a hole through a piece of steel because it's a fantastic drill press but you got to be able to have room to put the steel in. And I haven't forgotten. Did the skipper lose any weight? Uh, yeah! Yeah, I'm down to like uh, 216. Hey! Two inches for the boat and two pounds for me. I'll take that anytime. Hope you've been out in your shop making something. what you make today? And remember, don't be a fuckwit. <laughs> take care, guys. And send me a photo when you got it. svseeker at ymail.com.